Hey everybody, welcome back to Audio Hunt. I'm Peter, and as I've told you in past episodes, I like to buy used sound gear. Often finding it online at auctions. It's usually older gear, often hasn't been loved, doesn't look great in the pictures. But if you look for the right things, there are bargains to be had out there. You just have to look beyond the dust and missing buttons. Today I'm going to talk about one of the few things I bought new in the last 20 years and that's this little set of speakers. Now you've all had to take wires from your amplifier at some point in your life and plug them in to these little jacks on the back. So what do you say we take these little puppies out for a walk? That folks is called a crossover and that's what I'd like to talk about today. So if you send in full range from your amplifier, it's got everything in it. Bass, mid-range, treble, so you know the bass guitar, the low stuff, the human voice in the middle, and you know the high frequencies like cymbals off a drum kit. They're all going together into the signal and the crossover just cuts them into separate groups and fires them off. The crossovers in the back of a little speaker cabinet like this are called passive crossovers. That just means they're set up to do a job. You can't really adjust them at all. A passive crossover looks like this. They usually have a little copper coil and a couple of little electronic components like that. And as you can see, that's what's right behind the two little terminals that you plug your wires in from your amplifier. So what these things do, it basically scrubs off the signals that aren't wanted for the individual components. So for this little crossover, it'll take the high frequencies off a part of the signal so that it can feed a woofer like this with just the low frequencies because it doesn't put out really high sounds very well. Similarly, a different part of the circuitry will take off some of the low frequencies and just send the high frequencies to a tweeter because it's best suited to put out high frequencies. Now it's a bit wasteful because it's really taking a whole group of things and saying, well, I just want you. The rest of you, well, thanks anyway, go away. Now there's another kind of crossover and that's called an active crossover. Active crossovers take the signal before it's been amplified. Here, let me show you what I mean. As always, what I look for in gear like this is a nice, <laughs> yeah, it's heavy. Uh, Nice metal construction, as always, the rack mounts over here so it can be you know, locked right into some kind of a box if you wanna move it, eh? Really good quality knobs in the front. The switches just feel really good. Okay, this is old. This one's probably from around the mid-1980s. It's what they call a modular design, meaning these little things in front are, are just separate sections that you can just slip out and in and then screw them in. They don't make them like this anymore, but this came along for a good buck and I like crossovers. So what this does is it takes the sounds that are coming in the wire before it's been amplified, cuts them into the frequency chunks, and then sends just those chunks out to a set of amplifiers. So the bottom end, the bass, goes out to one amplifier. The mid-range, like my voice, goes out to a second amplifier. <clears throat> The high end, like, you know, drum cymbals or the fine scratching on an acoustic guitar, those high frequencies go to a third amplifier. The advantage to that is nothing gets wasted. Yes, you've got more gear, more wires, more amplifiers, but you're not scrubbing off a whole bunch of sounds and turning them into heat. Everything you're pulling out of the frequency band is going straight to an amplifier and getting used. You're not wasting anything. So when you're dealing with an active crossover, you're getting maximum power output from your amplifiers because they're not wasting anything. So you look in the back, you got the signal coming in from, it could be a, your personal listening device or a CD player or something. They pop into the back, but it's not amplified yet. It goes into here, this unit subdivides them into different frequency bands and then puts them out in pairs. So we got a low set, a medium set, and then high frequency set will go out to different amplifiers. That's typically how it's done in professional environments. This particular unit is set up to send out three separate frequency bands. You can get units like this that'll do four or even five 
frequency bands. But then you're going to need amplifiers to push all those too. But efficiency, and you get a lot of control over your sound, and you can really, really tweak exactly the frequencies you want to send to your speakers to um, take a, sort of the room into account, or if your speaker cabinets might have a, a hot spot here or there, you can take that into account and either dial them in or out of that frequency band, depending on what you want. So you get a lot of control with active crossovers. Actually, I paid more than I wanted. I, I like to get stuff in between 20 and 30 bucks. Well, I went all the way to $36 for this. I don't know what this thing would have cost new. Probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Ugh. You get a real nice light show off this because it has frequency bands showing you here. The meters jump for low end, medium, and high end. So it puts on a real nice light show. I don't really need another uh, electronic crossover or active crossover. I've already got a newer, smaller one, but this was really represents a good build quality. This is a British unit. You can tell when they sat down to make this, they wanted to make a good piece of gear. It is older. This would have been in service in the mid eighties and they're a decent unit. And I'm going to put it to use in my man cave. Maybe for a bass rig, I might just uh, have a bass player come over so he can put his instrument through a low cabinet and a mid and a high end horn. Separate amplifiers, but a lot of acoustic control. And through a unit like this, it'll be possible. Bottom line is, I like gold gear. I like fixing it up. Couple of scratches on it, but if you buy good gear, it'll work. You read the owner's manual before you bid, and you can get them online anywhere in PDF format. And I knew exactly what I was going to be getting when I went. So I'm Peter. That's the episode of Audio Hunt for today. Passive versus active crossovers. Just so you know, the next time you're at a party and somebody starts talking about that killer sound system and how it crossed over at 90 hertz or, yeah, I was really kicking it out below 125, you'll have a sense of the frequency band, bands being divided up and doing so in either a passive or an active way. Thanks a lot. I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Tell your friends and I hope you subscribe because I'm doing one of these every week and I'd like to be able to talk to you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.